Well, today's video is about a new purchase I made and why I made it and why I bought this particular brand and model. Um, I've been looking for a pistol that was more powerful than a 9mm. Um, hope to get some land, but if I'm out in the field or I'm out on land, I want something that can deal with hogs, bigger animals, and I just needed something bigger than a 9mm. I don't like recoil. I've been doing some research and if you got a lot of recoil, it's less shots down range, more time in between shots, and my options were 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum. And I just didn't want to do that. Uh, I had shot, and what I ended up getting, by the way, is a 10 millimeter. Years ago when they were uh, first put out, real popular, I think it's in the 70s, late 70s, um, I shot a, I believe it was a Smith & Wesson, one pull of the trigger and the trigger was horrible and the recoil was just ridiculous and I handed it back and said, no, that, you know, this is pretty much useless for me. And um, from my research, that was when they were using the stronger loads. And then they kind of fell out of favor. Recently, they've come back in favor. You can get weak loads and more powerful loads, which gives you the advantage of tailoring them for what you want. So I started looking at them again, but I still thought, no, I just don't want to deal with the recoil. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you can't shoot the damn thing, you might as well not have the damn thing. And then I heard about a pistol that just recently came out that people were saying the recoil problem was unintentionally addressed by them and that's because it's a blowback system so the slide has to be heavy now a lot of people out there already know what I'm talking about so that's it the high point JX well let's see what it is JXP 10 millimeter a lot of people refer to them as the heat yeet cannon although technically the new 9 millimeter when it comes out is going to be the yeet cannon but I know a lot of people that refer to this as a yeet cannon. Now, a lot of people hate these things. And if you do your research and you look at these, the fact is, these high points are damn near indestructible. I would never put my Glock or the Tauruses I own anywhere near through the crap that people put these through. And they just keep shooting. They keep working. Here's the deal. If I had stupid amount of money and could buy whatever I wanted, if I had the choice between a $3,000 custom 10 millimeter with compensators on it and everything, or this, I'm buying this. And here's the reason why. Those expensive weapons are great for what they are. Mostly they're competition. But if I'm out in the field and I'm dependent on one, and my life may be at stake, I don't want a finely tuned instrument that may be dropped in the mud and stop functioning. I want something that I can rely on. Okay, there's a difference between competition and relying to save your life. And, it's, and I have shot on rifle teams. And there's rifles out there that are great for that. You would never take hunting. So... When people talk about the, the custom guns they have, that's fine. For competition, yeah, that's what you're going to need. But if I'm out in the field and I might be in water and I might be in mud, I don't want one of those because I don't want the damn thing to stop working on me. The high points from everything I've done research on, these are going to be more likely to be able to function with a block barrel with crap in it and just keep on shooting. So that's what I want. I don't care what it costs, that's what I want. And there's videos out there where these are torture tested by people who are gun people and not gun nuts, and they just keep right on ticking. Um, you see these put through crap that you will never see people put through Glocks, Tauruses, Berettas, SIGs. They wouldn't dream of doing that. They go, uh, no, that would, might ruin the gun. Yes, it might ruin the gun. It probably will ruin the gun. 
So I did my research, I looked at this, and I'm going to tell you why I decided to buy this particular 10 millimeter. It's only 10 rounds. Okay? And I understand that. But in the situations I'm going to get in, it's very unlikely I'm going to have time to deal with more than 10 rounds. Because in less than 10, the situation is going to be settled one way or another. It's just the way it works out. Now, this isn't going to be the only weapon I'll be carrying. I'll probably be carrying my 9mm on my side. This in a chest holster where I can get to it real quick. So I've got plenty of firepower. You know, coyotes, bobcats, stuff like that. The 9's fine. Big pig. A cat. I'm going to want something with more knockdown power. And that's why I picked this up. 10 millimeter round fits that bill. They've got some new rounds out that are really nice and that you can either get penetrator rounds or defense rounds. Now, people say it's heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. It's three pounds. That's one of the reasons I wanted it. This is going to reduce recoil. This monster slide is going to help on recoil. And that was my biggest problem with the 10 millimeter. I haven't shot this yet. Uh, I'll give you an update after I shoot it. But that was actually something that I was looking for. And when I, people are saying, well, it weighs three pounds, I'm going, well, good. That's what I want. I want that weight. I'm not competition shooting with it. Um, this is going to be an emergency gun. When I'm out in the field and I don't want heavy recoil, I want that barrel to come back down so I can get a second, third shot off. And it has a threaded barrel. Now that does a couple things. Let me just get this off and show you. Supposedly it's a standard thread. So you can put a can or a suppressor on it. And I've seen a video where a guy did that and he used some of the ammo that's a little bit lower speed and it's quiet. It really, it really does suppress it. Um, 10 millimeters good for hunting by the way. And you can put a compensator on it to even help with the recoil even more. So you've got that advantage. It has the Picatinny rail. I don't know, if I put something on it, it would be a flashlight. Uh, I'm not going to get crazy with it. Um, regular thumb down safety. I'm actually used to these, so this doesn't bother me, and it comes down and up. The more you work with it, the easier it is. Now, let me go ahead and unload this puppy. I'm used to 9mm and I've got a 44 Magnum rifle, lever action, which I really like, which I'll probably be carrying with me too. But it's not as easy to get out and get to. Some videos say this only holds 9, it holds 10. Now, a lot of people hate this. Take the safety off. Locks back on an empty clip. Goes forward. Now, safety's off. That's not going to fire. I'm a little bit paranoid. Fires. A lot of people disable that. I like that feature. If I'm carrying this in a bag and I'm going over to a friend's house and he says, you can put your gun up in the closet, keep it secure, and I've got one in the chamber, all I have to do is pull this out and take it with me in my pocket. Even if a kid got that weapon or this weapon, he can't fire or she can't fire it because of the safety mechanism. When the magazine is out, it will not fire. I happen to like it. A lot of people hate it. This is just my opinion. You better get used to it because I think more and more gun manufacturers are going to do that. If nothing else, for liability. Now, when I first started looking at these, I thought, well, because I tell people, if it doesn't feel comfortable in your hand, you're probably not going to be able to shoot it very well. So it doesn't matter how good it is, how expensive it is, or whatever. 
um, you, you're going to have problems with it. I don't like 45 grips. I actually hate 45 grips. And I have trouble shooting them because of that. Um, I've shot some, I've shot the Glock 45 and I can shoot it okay. I just don't want the recoil. But the 1911, I just do not like the way that feels on my hand. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I went to a gun sh uh, show and I was able to pick up a, uh, first was a 380 and I thought, this actually feels pretty good. Then I was able to pick up the 9mm and it felt good and I picked up the um, 45 a couple weeks later I thought, I like the way these feel. The, the, the weight on the top is not a problem for me. I um, owned a uh, Beretta 92SF when they first came out and those people considered them big bulky and heavy and I liked them So I finally found one of these and I'm in the north of Dallas area uh, And I had to travel over an hour to get one and pay a premium price Because these things are being sucked up around here like crazy. I mean, they're hard to find um, a couple weeks ago, I could have ordered one on Academy's webpage and I went back there and they were all gone. Well, I didn't find them and I seen a video where a guy said that this will probably end up being the number one selling nine or ten millimeter of all time because they're just people are buying them up at such a crazy rate and although I haven't shot it just from filling it I can see why um, I like the way that feels I like the handle the grips that's a personal preference and I understand that now I have done a little bit of sanding on this and what I did when I got it there were some hot spots on the grip and I took out my handy dandy Swiss Army knife which I'm getting out right now and used the metal file and just lightly and I mean very lightly sand it some areas. I'm going to show you the areas I sand it. And they're going to make grips for these eventually. There's a ridge right here. Just a couple scrapes and it took that down. Uh, oh, it feels like I might have to do it again right here. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but this was a little bit tough or sharp so I took it down. And right here and a little bit right here. Another thing I did is I did the triggers on either side because it was a little bit of a bite and took that out. And let me show you on that literally what I did to fix this rascal. People saying you shouldn't have to do that on a new pistol. It's around 200 and some odd dollars. Okay, I don't mind having to do this. Especially since, from what I was looking for, there was no other pistol on the market that I've seen that is like this one. And it's literally just really light. I'm going to use this part of it because there's a little bump there. And I'm doing it at an odd angle. All right, that about that's all it it's gone now and uh, like I said everybody seems to think light is better but in a lot of times for me I like the heavier weapon it reduces recoil makes it more comfortable to shoot now as people use the phrase the 500 pound gorilla in the corner or elephant in the corner the trigger I went to the shop I pulled this out they let me shoot it or not shoot it but they let me pull the trigger there was no elephant or gorilla in the corner okay <laughs> I, I don't know I'm sure each one is slightly different maybe a lot different they're talking I've seen this trigger pull rated from six to ten pounds now Put it in the right way. Um, 
I've owned a couple of Berettas that were very similar to this, this trigger. Uh, my Glock isn't that far off from this trigger. I got, I got a Glock 17. Uh, I'm real familiar with uh, that trigger pull. This is closer to it than what you would, a lot of people were saying or would suspect. It could be just this weapon because I've heard such a wide complaint about the trigger that I think it's, there's just a wide range of trigger pulls out there. Um, I've only had experience with this one, so I don't know. But it's definitely not the horrible trigger that I keep hearing about. This is, for me, it's, it's a trigger pull I'm kind of used to. It's not that far off from other weapons I've got. I know Glock people are going to say, oh, no, that's not true. But you know what? It is, for, at least for my, the one I got. And I, brought, and I got it brand new out of the box. And I've heard people complain about the Glock trigger pull. Any weapon out there, there's people that like to trigger, there's people that don't. So don't get your panties in a wad. So the trigger pull is manageable, more than manageable. I, I actually was surprised by it, and it's not going to be a problem at all. Um, I happen to like thumb safeties. It's just me. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with any other safety or not even having one if you've got weapon management skills. Um, long uh, grip. So when I grab this, I may put fingers below it. I'm just going to have to shoot it. I am not one of those. I don't like that grip. It just bugs the crap out of me. I, and here, because that slide is so low, that's a dangerous grip. So I usually hook the thumb, and I'm thinking of going maybe two underneath. Um, I'll just have to shoot it. That's another thing. I don't grip all my pistols the same way. It depends on the grip. It depends on the size of the grip. Um, I'm looking for a stable shot. If I have to change my grip for each pistol to get that stable shot, that's all I'm worried about. I hear people focus on the pistol, the grip the slide, everything. And like I said, I was on a rifle team. What we focused on is hitting the target in the bullseye, making that high score, whatever you had to do to do that, okay? Now, I was taught a specific way and then I modified that for the way I shoot. People get lost in all of this gun stuff. This serves a purpose. What drove me to this was that purpose, not the gun, not the company, okay? I said, I need a more controllable, larger caliber pistol. I was looking at a few other ones, didn't particularly care for them, uh, but I still wanted to shoot them. I seen this, it's got the higher capacity than a revolver. It's reliable. There's plenty of evidence out there to prove that. The trigger pull, I, I checked the trigger pull before I bought it. It's in the range that is acceptable to me. Actually, it's well within that range that is acceptable to me. So this thing fits all the things I need. There's not another 10 millimeter out there that I've seen that does. If somebody said, we will swap you one for one with a $1,000 10 millimeter, I'm going to go, no, it's not going to do what I need it to do. It's not going to do what I want it to do. This does. This is why I bought it. Now, is it ugly? I don't think it's ugly. I actually like the way this looks. My ugliest gun that I have, or the ugliest weapon that I have, is my Glock. And I've always argued with people. They, they, they love the way it looks. And I go, well, it looks like it was made by somebody from the Lego company. It's all squared off. It's just not a pretty gun, in my opinion. I didn't buy it to be pretty. I bought it to be what it is. And I like my Glock, and I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, this, I bought for what it does. I just happen to way, like the way it looks, especially with the threaded barrel. So for me, this was the, the really the only choice I had. I needed the weight. I needed the reliability. It's plus P rated. Not all 10 millimeters are plus P rated. And you're paying premium money for some that you don't want to shoot a super hot load out. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. 
This is plus P rated, so you can use just about anything through it. That's another advantage because you can customize what you're throwing through it for what circumstance. Do you need a penetrator round? Are you in bear country and you need something that can make it into the body cavity? There's a video out there where a bear got shot by like 17 times with a 45. None of them made it into the body cavity. It was a 10 millimeter that took it down because it made it into the body cavity. A lot of people aren't going to want to hear that, but that's, I did the research, I looked at it, and I thought, okay, I need a 10 millimeter. I need one that's got less recoil. This does it. It just happens to be a high point, and it happens to be less expensive than the other ones. I would recommend that if you get a chance to rent one of these to do it, not everybody's going to like them. The grip for a lot of people are going to be an issue because it's a big grip. I have wide hands, so it is accommodating it more. Excuse the fingernails, I do metal art, so they're always messed up. Um, this, I probably won't put anything in there. If I do it, it'll be a flashlight. Um, there are cases where this is useful for people. I'm just not sure I'm going to be in that situation. I can take this plate off and put a optic rail on here. They make one now for this that's stable. And you can put a, a red dot, halo, whatever you want to put on there. I'm not sure I'm going to do that because I'm going to be in situations where there's a possibility this is going to hit water. And then I don't want that electronic shorting out. And then when I need it, I don't have any aiming system. So it does have that option. And maybe someday I will. But right now... Um, if I can find some other sites I like better, although these sites are, they're pretty good. They're better than my Beretta 92SF sites. They're better than my Taurus Millennial, uh, one, or PT-111 Millennial Pro, which is a good handgun. I just don't like the sights on it. These are a lot better. I like them better than the Glock. But it... Those are the reasons I picked it up. I'll give you an update when I shoot it. But if you're looking at this, look at what you need. Look at the videos about this and see if it, it, it's where you need to be. And if it is, don't worry that it's a high point. And don't worry that it's inexpensive, okay? Because they are reliable. There's enough evidence out there that, that show that they're probably one of the most reliable weapons. They have the lowest return issues than any other weapon out there by far okay some of that's just because people throw them away but a lot of it's got to do with you look at what they these things have been put through is these are tough weapons i've seen people in video shoot this and they're driving tax with it they say this is extremely accurate especially for what it is now does that move yes it doesn't have rails in here. It's a blowback system. Uh, doesn't affect the aimability of it or the accuracy of it. It's just because it's a blowback. And a blowback is what I was looking for because it reduces recoil because of the weight of the slide. So that's why I bought it. Uh, I'm going to shoot it. I'll let you know how that goes. But right now, so far, the way it handles, uh, I was taught when you buy a new weapon, to carry it around, play with it. When I say play with it, I don't mean shoot it or anything like that. Rack it, um, load and empty the, the uh, magazine. Just get used to having it in your hands so that when you're out there to shoot it, it's, you don't have to learn what you're doing. You already know where everything is. You're already used to uh, um, using it. Uh, I had uh, uh, one of my uh, Berettas on the nightstand and one of the things I did with it, I turned the light off, take the magazine out, um, pick it up like this, total darkness, get the magazine, rack around, turn the light on, empty it, and do that a couple times. Because I was surprised when you first do this and you're fumbling for where everything's at. Because it's not, you're not used to that orientation. And I was taught First, you put it in the orientation you're used to, find the magazine, then put it in and do all your what you need to do. Um, 
so I get real familiar with them before I ever get them to the range. When I do go to the range, I use the one, two, three method that might be out there. I don't know. I came up with it. One bullet in the magazine, you shoot one bullet through it. That tells you if it's going to work, if it's going to cycle, if there's going to be any problems with it. Then after that, I put two bullets in. Shoot both of them. That does a couple things. You pull the trigger and both, bar both rounds go down that barrel, you got a problem. And you don't want that problem with a fully loaded magazine where it's dumping all of them. So that's going to tell you if that's a problem. I have known people that have had that problem. I knew a guy that bought a uh, Caltech Sub-9. I had one, I liked it, he bought it, and I told him how he wasn't that familiar with weapons. I told him this one, two, three method. He put the first round in it, did the action, and it shot. I thought, oh, that might be a problem, but it might be a fluke. Put two rounds in it, both of them shot. Sent it back. They fixed it, said, yeah, there's a problem with it. Okay, so I do one, I do two, and, and the two shots, some people will double tap an automatic, especially the more powerful ones. So if you put two shots and you double tap it, then you need to do one bullet until you get used to it and you stop double tapping it. So that's why I do two. Make sure it's not malfunctioning. Make sure I'm not going to accidentally double tap it because it's a different weapon, it's a different grip, and it's, this one's more powerful. Then I do three. And that's just to make sure that I'm not going to double tap or it's not going to go crazy on me. And then after three, I'll start putting more rounds in it. But I do the one, two, three, and anything I haven't shot for a long time or that's new, that I'm not familiar with just as a safety mechanism to make sure I don't end up shooting me or somebody else and that's what I'm going to do when I take this one to the range and hopefully it'll be in a couple weeks but so far I'm really liking this I like the weight I like the way it looks and I'm going to see if I like the way it shoots but again do your research look at this I know there's people out there that absolutely hate high points uh, but if this one works okay, I may get what they, the company calls the Yeet Cannon, the 9mm with 10 or 12 rounds, whatever it's going to be. I may get one of those as a backup gun to my Glock. I still like the Glock, but, but I, I think if I like the way this shoots, I'm going to have enough confidence in the uh, uh, high points to get the, uh, the new higher capacity 9mm because it looks a lot like this one on top but anyway there's the video I'll let you know how it turns out when I shoot it but just remember don't just poo poo these because of what you heard do the research look at them and make your own decision up and I'll let you know how the range goes um, I probably won't be able to film out there because usually there's a ton of people and they get nervous so I just don't even try to film but I'll let you know how that goes and thanks for watching the video